G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at a plane that is a bit of a turd, the Mirage F1C. The Mirage F1C came to the game with a lot of hype and a lot of anticipation that it would be the redeeming factor for the French tree. Since the addition of the Mirage 3C, the French tree have not really had a competitive plane at the top echelons of battle. And of course, they haven't had a plane that has the lovely Pulse Doppler radar. This gives a plane such an advantage and not having it has been a sorely missed faction of the French tree in the last couple of months. But now they finally have it and um, oh dear, it's pretty bad. The Mirage F1C is a very, very disappointing plane. And throughout this video, we'll sort of go, go on about sort of how and why uh, and potentially some solutions. Maybe this plane could get better missiles. Maybe this plane could get some uh, lower battle ratings. Who knows? Let me know in the comments section what you guys believe or what you guys think should happen to this plane. Uh, of course, any interaction for the algorithm is greatly appreciated. So let's start off with the good things about the Mirage F1C. And that is what you can see there on the end pylons. They are magic ones. Uh, of course, this plane also gets Magic 2s, but this footage was recorded before the Magic 2s were added to the game. And as I am recording this video, the Magic 2s are really not that much better. They're not really any more significant than the other missiles that this plane gets. The Magic 2s, I believe, have an extra 5G overload. Um, they don't have all aspect capabilities, which I believe they did in real life. And of course, they don't have any serious countermeasure avoidance systems that I believe the Magic 2 in real life also has. Uh, that is okay for balance, but really doesn't make much of a difference to the gameplay. The Magic 1s would have been fine, uh, because the Magic 2s are such an insignificant upgrade that I think we'll only talk about them towards the end of the video. So, the other missiles this plane gets, what are they? They are radar homing missiles, uh, and there's one infrared homing missile, but I can't remember which one it is. Either way, in the current loadout system, you can't really take it out with anything meaningful, so I wouldn't bother. That magic, or that missile is the R, uh, the Super 530F, I believe. This thing, it's it's okay. It, it's, it's not that great, but it's okay. Uh, you can kind of get by. But of course, each missile is only as good as its radar. And the radar is the most important thing in this particular plane. It is a pulse doppler in the form of an MTI mode. Uh, so this plane is sort of very, very sensitive to low speeds or planes that are flying away from you. Um, for some reason, I don't really get that feeling. I think it might be bugged. Um, and of course, being a French plane or at least a minor tech tree plane, it's probably not going to get fixed for a very while, long time. Or at least it's going to stay some form of bugged until Gaijin gets off their ass and fixes it, which is going to be a very long time. Anyway, our first opponent here is going to face an R550 Magic, uh, and that is pretty much going to be a sure kill. Anything particularly slow, anything not flaring, he is going to get eaten by a Magic pretty damn quickly, and that is probably the best thing about this plane. You can keep a fair amount of speed, and you can also deal a fair amount of damage with those R550 Magics. However, once you run out of magics, you are also out of luck. Well, I say that, and I'm going to load here at 530, which is one of those big chunguses on the side, and you can kind of see how it sort of wiggles around the air. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know how these work. I can't figure out a rhyme or reason. They just work sometimes, and they just don't other times, and it's just beyond me as to where this sort of lies in its niche. The R550s are going to be your mainstay. The R530Fs are going to be your sort of backups. They're going to be your, uh, I hope I get this kill. And then if you're down to your, if you're down to your basic missiles, the other ones that are, you know, the one that's in the center pylon, that's an absolute turd, uh, you're kind of SOL, shit out of luck. It's not going to really get you a kill most of the time. And uh, if it does, you would count your lucky stars because this thing is a 15G overload. Uh, and of course it's tied to that, that, um, radar that I'm still not sure how it works. Uh, I know roughly how MTI works. Uh, as you can see, I'm sort of getting a lock here and that's to be expected until I guess the guy starts flying away from me and then all knowledge goes out the window. But uh, we're gonna sort of abandon that now and go to the plane's uh, performance. It's turning performance, it's acceleration. And it's got none, nothing, absolutely nothing. It might as well just be a, a car. It might as well be like a, a little little Volkswagen Beetle, uh, because that's kind of what it is, and it's coming up against Ferraris. The F4EJ here has 
double the engines, and it's got a uh, fair amount of thrust. It is a bus, but it's he's kind of blown himself away. He's just like done a big done a big mistake here. I have to slam on the afterburner, uh, slam off the afterburner, slam on the air brakes to get on the other side of him. And even so, I'm really really struggling to turn with this guy. I think he's just playing his plane a little bit too frivolously here uh, and you can see if he was keeping tighter turns or you know playing his speed a little bit better he would have me very very easily you can see that he's using his afterburner still uh, and I've got my afterburner and air brake off in order to try and get him to overshoot I managed to get rid of some of that uh, R60 evilness in the form of flares so this plane's got some some decent amount of flares and chaff which is quite nice it's a, it's a good redeeming feature of this plane but at the same time, there aren't many planes that don't have that much chaff and, uh, and flares. So there's not really much to write home about. Now, the uh, F4EJ decides to plonk himself into the ground, and that leaves me in a rate fight against the MiG-23. And any rate fight against the MiG-23 is uh, basically a losing battle because of that uh, variable sweep wing. And whilst you do have those nice leading edge slats, the plane is too much of a fat chungus to really do anything. And of course, with that engine, you don't really have some great acceleration. So here I am with an attempted getaway, which is, it will end badly unless the MiG-23 absolutely does something really stupid. You can see how quickly the MLD is picking up on me. And I'm just trying to, trying to get higher than uh, 750, but it's not working. I have to turn in with him and he's just overcooked. And that gives me the perfect opportunity to get a lucky hit. Again, sheer dumb luck. Things just go the way you want them to go. And uh, the Mirage F1C is just sort of there, just just happens to be there to pick it up. This plane is really frustrating to fly. The acceleration is negligible. The turn rate is terrible. The, the everything, there's, there's just nothing really that's particularly incredible about this plane. Apart from, of course, the Magic Ones. The Magic Ones are going to be your redeeming feature here. And of course, that's pretty much it. It's a boring plane. However, there are a couple of occasions where this plane might shine. And of course, these are other occasions where other planes might also shine. Uh, and that is in a multi-engagement scenario, 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 doesn't matter. This plane is uh, going to be engaging in a couple of enemies here, but it looks like they've got a lock before me. I'm going to release the missile, but again, it goes for flares. I, I don't understand how that works. I understand that chaff is designed to reflect radar signatures and so break a lock, uh, but it seems like in game they act as flares. They may have the same coding. Either way, it doesn't matter. So we're going to go after an SU-22 instead, see another one, have the Magic 2 ready, which is a little bit better. And you can see that it does track quite nicely. It's got a nice, decent burn time. And of course, it strikes beautifully when it does. There we go. There's kill number one. So we've noticed here that there is another enemy plane that is going to be coming in. Uh, the MiG-23 is on fire. I'm pretty sure there's something around me, but uh, the spotting system says no. Uh, there it is. A nice big F4 Phantom has uh, now double the missiles because I've foregone the one in the center pylon just to save some weight. Uh, and it does actually, does actually make a fair bit of difference. So uh, if you are wanting to get rid of some dead weight, that uh, middle pylon is actually really really just not worth keeping you might as well you might as well just get rid of that middle missile and you know that's pretty poor for a top tier jet it's got a useless missile which uh, really really sucks especially when it has no other redeeming qualities now i'm going to prep a super uh, and going to send it the way of this phantom and it looks like he's not paying attention and you can see how well this missile works when it isn't uh going to be distracted by flares or chaff or anything like that so it is okay, it is just really susceptible for some reason, uh, and I don't understand why a missile like that would be susceptible to flares and chaff, but again, this is the wisdom of Gaijin that we're talking about, so you never know. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of at a low speed here, and my ability to get to supersonic speeds is not really that great. This plane also tops out at about the same speed as the MiG-21 BIS, which is at 11.0, except for the SAL, which is, I believe, it's 11.3, because it's got the R60Ms. But um, honestly, I feel like this plane could be 1102. It kind of feels like an F4 Phantom, but a little bit worse. Uh, and it definitely doesn't have the same capabilities as other 11.3s. 
That being said, I also think it's time for an 11.7 battle rating, and maybe we can talk about that in another video. But uh, for now, I'm going to be trying to get this MLD, who uh, might just be not paying attention. He's cupping, he's just like doing a couple of little flares, just like prepping a couple bit, but no, nah, not paying attention. Easy three kills, and uh, that's pretty much all she wrote for this battle because this plane is just, just so insignificant. You know. Any other plane, I probably could have got three kills, maybe four as well, because the amount of missiles that this plane carries is just nothing special. It's nothing particularly amazing. And uh, in we go to our fifth and final game, which I'm going to show you because it's a little bit more special, but it kind of highlights the, highlights the same thing. We're not really being the most valuable player here. We're just sort of in a position at the right place at the right time to make the most of the situation that we have. Uh, and that's not really anything significant, which is why I have such a low opinion of the F1C. It's not particularly good at turning, as we could see from the first clip. It's not particularly fast. It doesn't have any particularly impressive missiles, apart from the Magic 2s, which you get two of instead of four, or even six, or even eight for planes like the Phantoms, who have four very, very capable meta missiles. Uh, and, of course, your radar isn't particularly amazing either, because you just... I don't know, sometimes it just doesn't work. It might just be the way that the radar missiles are at the moment. Because at the, admittedly, I haven't played a whole heap. Uh, and of course, I haven't had a whole lot of time because I've had some very, very busy work commitments. So in it could just be a, a War Thunder wide bug. It could also just be an F1C bug. But that doesn't really change the fact that the F1C is overall uh, a quite poor plane. The, you've got no serious acceleration to speak of. And of course, like I've mentioned, there's nothing really else. What could you do to make it better, I suppose? Uh, maybe take less fuel. 20 minutes of fuel does put you on the edge, uh, but at the same time, it does give you a little bit more turning capabilities. I normally take 30 minutes of fuel because I need the longevity, um, and that normally leaves me a little bit fatter and heavier. It still sucks. It really, really sucks because I was hoping that the French tree would finally get something competitive, and what we're left with is a plane that could have been added to the game months ago. It's just, it's just garbage. It's just not fun. And it's just miserable. Like playing this plane, you, you're going to really struggle and you're just not going to have fun. And for me, playing a plane like that sucks. Like having to make videos on that plane sucks as well because I had to go through a couple of weeks of just pure torture because this plane was just so bad. Now, in this case here, we have two planes that are heavily distracted. You can see I'm redlining at 320, 330 here, and I will get all the way to 360 with uh, the red line, but you can see it's it's really hard to get anything to work. And the super goes out here. It also seems to have a shorter range, if I might add. Uh, it doesn't seem to be quite as, uh, as strong as something like an AIM-7. It still keeps that, you know, R530 range, which is quite disappointing because the AIM-7s have, in this case, with the AIM-7F, we have up to 40 kilometers range. Uh, and that kind of sucks compared to this. Like, it's so unfair for the French because they just don't get anything that's anything near capable. What is there? I have no idea. I, I honestly couldn't tell you because I genuinely don't know. I don't really, I'm not familiar with any sort of uh, French late Cold War jets. I, I don't really know. Is there another Mirage F1 that could go to the, come to the game? Is there, you know, something new? I, I genuinely don't know. What I do know is that this plane is in the game as it is right now, and it fucking sucks. So, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that you can do. It, it just makes me sad for the people who love the French tree. And, of course, it makes me sad because I had to sit through, like, 100 games of this stuff because I couldn't get any good footage. But, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope... You enjoyed this uh, horrible gameplay and unfortunately I have to dip into the negative side for reviews again because this plane just not up to scratch. But you know what is up to scratch? My decal. Link in the description below. 3% off at uh, all Gaijin purchases. So thank you very much for supporting the channel in that way. Thank you for watching the video. Take care and I'll catch you next time.